Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the top seven common mistakes that fish keepers make. And these are all gonna be things that I wish I knew earlier. Like I wish I knew this stuff so long ago. And these aren't just gonna be like, you know, obvious things like make sure you use tap water conditioner and make sure there aren't sharp decorations in your aquarium. We're gonna try and stay away from all the obvious things in this video because I think those are all self-explanatory. If you've been keeping fish for a while, you'd know that. If you guys don't know, I do breed a lot of fish. I breed tons of different types of rams, discus, like lots of different freshwater things and to get fish to breed it does take a lot of effort and there are a lot of lessons that you have to learn and I've talked about different lessons in fish keeping and stuff like that before but in today's video we're just going to focus on common mistakes and this is just going to be like a little guide that I would send myself maybe three years ago to be like hey listen up stupid pay attention to these things and you're just going to save yourself a ton of time so without any further ado let's get started so number one on my list is going to be something that i didn't really figure out until actually quite recently if i'm being honest probably in the last couple of months and number one on my list is going to be the temperature of fish now a lot of the time when we talk about a tropical fish we just talk about a fish being in you know slightly warm water whether it be 24 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius that being like a temperature range for these fish to live in. Basically, I was just keeping all my fish in that range, whether it be a ram, a discus, or even a bristlenose pleco, or a corydoras. And something that's wrong with this is in the wild, I thought the temperature like fluctuated quite a lot in the rivers. And something you'll figure out really quickly is it actually doesn't fluctuate a lot. It only goes a few degrees either way. And most of the time, the fish are kept at a really stable temperature. And that's really indicative of when they're gonna breed and you know how happy they feel and if they're stressed or things like that. Now, I was keeping rams in grow out tanks that were too Cold for them and I was having really you know weak rams that weren't growing well I was keeping discus in too cool of aquariums and everything like that and ever since I've focused on temperature in the aquariums I've just seen massive improvements in the behavior of my fish like these discus and these rams really fixed themselves up and started to breed really reliably and well for me once I fixed up their temperature and got the aquariums warm and vice versa my shrimp really started to breed a lot better once they were in aquariums that are a little bit cooler like 23 degrees Celsius I guess the lesson here is just to pay attention to the temperature don't just treat it like a big parameter and don't treat it as like a range to keep in. You want to like try and be a little bit more specific with it, especially for breeding. I guess in a community aquarium, you can kind of get away with this a little bit. I'd more try and lean towards keeping things on the hot end, but sometimes you can't do that with certain things. So that's why a lot of community aquariums, you got to be careful with what you pick to try and make it work all together. But that's my first thing is just temperature is a little bit more important than you think it is. Lesson number two or thing number two that I wish I knew earlier is learning how water chemistry works. And what I mean by that is learning about how GH and KH affect the pH in the water. I know this is gonna sound really scary to all you beginners. You shouldn't be afraid of this at all. It'll be really easy to figure out once you get a little lesson on it, but I'm not gonna give you that lesson here, but learning things like, yeah, how the pH works, how the GH works, how the KH works, you know, TDS in the water. Those are basically all the things you need to know. The nitrogen cycle is really important, knowing, you know, how to add plants to an aquarium to make it a little bit easier to take care of. All those things, like especially the GH and the KH, I use a lot of those measurements in my aquariums to help trigger like my plecos and to figure out whether an aquarium is safe for a certain type of fish because I do use RO water which is reverse osmosis water and that's pure water and I use that to mix with a bunch of my aquariums to adjust the amount of mineral that's in that water because water isn't just water it has lots of little minerals in there and the amount of minerals in there is indicative of the environment that the fish comes from so it's really important to learn those things if I'm being honest I didn't really even know about this until I had a full fish room those things are actually very very important a lot of people will act like they're not important I'm not saying to monitor them all the time I don't even like check my pH and GH and KH like unless I see that there's something that's going a little bit weird I roughly know on my aquariums where the pH and GH and KH are but paying attention to those things it's very valuable it'll like answer a lot of the questions that you have if a fish is stressed or if a fish isn't breeding learning how how water chemistry works is super important. And then number three on my list is gonna be that equipment isn't everything. Now, this isn't something that is a problem for me now, but when I was a lot younger, I thought that equipment was super important. Now, I guess equipment comes in handy, like having a really nice glass for an aquarium makes an aquarium look better. Having a decent filter does add a lot of biological area for the tank to have. But like, what I'm trying to say about this tip is you don't need all the best equipment to have a really good looking aquarium. And especially to breed fish, you don't need all the best equipment. Like, all you really need is a glass box, a heater, a filter, and just a bit of effort and you'll have success. It's mostly about, you know, working the science experiment of having an aquarium to match what you actually have in your local area. So like, don't try and set up a big CO2 aquarium if you can't afford it. And you don't need to do that to have a beautiful aquarium. Just use low maintenance plants, a couple of sponge filters, and you can make some amazing aquariums. Like equipment isn't everything. I thought, you know, I wouldn't have a chance at making any beautiful aquariums when I was a lot younger because I didn't have CO2 and I didn't have beautiful bright lights. Like even eBay lights are good. Like 
just cheap lights are good. I use floodlights in my aquariums and these things cost 20 bucks each and they look amazing in my opinion. So yeah, equipment's not everything. You don't need the best equipment all the time. Companies will try and convince you that you do. They're just doing it because they want to make money and there's no problem with that. I'm not dissing companies, but you don't need the best equipment all the time. And then number four on my list is perfectionism and I'm a perfectionist. I know a lot of people say that they are. I don't have huge, huge issues with perfectionism, but I do struggle a lot of the time with perfectionism, especially when it comes to like fish breeding. You're never going to breed a fish perfectly. You're always going to have some fish die and it's always about trying to get as many of those fish through as possible. You know, you're going to have to cull fish and it's not going to feel as good as it is when you watch like a YouTube video of someone doing it because you don't see all of the bad stuff that they did along the process, like how they had like an ammonia spike and lost some or how something like that happened. You just see at the end all these beautiful fish that they've bred and raised and that they're taking to the fish shop and you get to the end of doing that yourself and you go, well, it doesn't feel like that, and that's because it's never gonna feel like that. You've gotta just accept that not everything's perfect in this hobby. You're gonna kill fish, and that's part of being in the hobby. You, you will kill fish. There's things sometimes you can't even control that are gonna kill fish, and I guess this piece of advice is just, as much as you can, just try not to be a perfectionist. You're just gonna ruin the hobby for yourself. Just try and enjoy everything, and just accept that fish die, and you're gonna make mistakes. Being a perfectionist in this hobby is probably not the best thing to do, and if you're a perfectionist, go find another hobby. Like, this is not the hobby for you. And then number five on my list is gonna be not buying sick fish now this is gonna be very obvious to a lot of people who are experienced aquarium keepers but to beginners I know it's very tempting to be all Disney with it and to have a look at a sick fish and think that you're gonna save it and most of the time you end up buying that fish and trying to save it and it'll just die or it'll infect all the other fish in your aquarium with the disease that it has just always buy really good quality fish buy fish that swim really well that look really good are aggressive eaters and don't buy the sunken in belly fish don't buy the sick fish you're not gonna be able to really fix it yeah this is just a little thing that I wanted to add because I know that at the start of keeping my fish I bought skinny guppies and stuff like that thinking that I'm gonna save them and fatten them up and you never do like it's very rarely that you're gonna save a sick fish fish die all the time and sick fish are probably one of the hardest animals to cure and then number six on the list is gonna be using live plants in the aquarium or I guess not using live plants like if you don't use live plants in an aquarium especially like planted aquariums that you don't want to do a lot of maintenance on you're an idiot like plants are so so good for an aquarium and if you see up here this aquarium is definitely overstocked there's way too many rams in here at this point but all this jungle of wisteria and ambulia here is keeping this aquarium stable and is using all those nutrients to actually grow and it's making my job a lot easier. I don't have to clean this aquarium as much as if I didn't have these plants in there. So tip number six is to use plants in your aquarium. I've talked about it in multiple videos, but plants really help to balance out the aquarium because they use a lot of the nutrients that build up in the tank and they take those out to grow and it just makes your job a whole lot easier. If it's just java moss, that helps, but I'd recommend really fast growing plants like wisteria, ambulia, water sprite, just to name a few. Phallus and is a decent one. All those fast growing plants add them to your aquarium is gonna make a huge difference even in just like breeding tanks I don't use enough plants in this fish room and then number seven on my list the last thing this is gonna sound so cliche and this isn't my thing this is something that I learned from Eric Bodrock and uh, just watching some of his talks on YouTube and things like that and this tip is gonna to be to be the fish this sounds really like cliche and it sounds so stupid and simple but being the fish like sitting down and imagining what that fish is going through in the wild and what its natural environment looks like and trying to best mimic that in your aquarium by you know adding leaves to the bottom of the aquarium making the aquarium dark, adding plants to the top of the aquarium, things like that. Just be the fish and try and mimic the environment and you're gonna have very, very healthy and happy fish and you're probably gonna have a lot of breeding. So something I wish I knew a little bit earlier, I only recently learned this, is to be the fish. It's such a good tip. If there's ever any issues or you're trying to figure out how to breed something, I don't always do this either, I'm not perfect, but trying to be the fish, not thinking about what it looks like on the outside, but trying to be what's on the inside of what you're making, it really does help. So. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, I hope you learned something, I hope you appreciated my very small and limited amount of experience in this hobby. I've only been in this hobby for like 7 years so I don't know everything but that's all the things I wish I knew a little bit earlier. So thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you in the next one.